Look, Ma, no AI. Using my own voice today due to suggestions made on my YouTube channel. That's crazy. No one would watch junk like that. Today I want to talk about TV producer Fred F <music> series that usually died within a year. Fred Friedberger was born on February 19, 1915 and passed away on March 2, 2003. He was born to a Jewish family in New York City. In the late 1930s, Freeberger worked in advertising in New York. During World War II, he was stationed in England with the United States 8th Air Force, but he would be shot down over Germany and spent two years as a prisoner of war. He was awarded the Purple Heart for his service. After the war, he moved to Hollywood with the intention of working in film publicity. A studio strike saw him move into screenwriting. He was associated with Buddy Rogers Comet Productions and Columbia Pictures. Under the pen name Charles Woodgrove, he was one of the four credited writers on the 1953 movie The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. From 1958, Freeberger worked almost exclusively in television. As a writer, he contributed scripts for dozens of TV shows in that period. That item is right where it belongs, on the comic page. As a producer, his first assignment was in 1960 on the medical drama Ben Casey, followed by a brief stint as a producer of The Wild Wild West during its first season. In 1968, Freeberger was hired as producer for the third and final season of Star Trek. He then returned to writing, scripting episodes for a number of early 1970s TV series, including All in the Family, Emergency, Starsky and Hutch, and Ironside. He also worked as a story editor at Hanna-Barbera on the TV series The New Scooby-Doo Movies and Super Friends. Freeberger then moved on to produce the second and last season of the British sci-fi series Space 1999, the final season of The Six Million Dollar Man, and the short-lived Beyond Westworld. Toward the end of his career, he wrote six episodes of the 1980s syndicated series Superboy. Freeberger was considered as a producer for Star Trek as far back as 1966, but had other commitments. Then, in 1968, he got his chance at Star Trek. Since Gene Roddenberry had a fallout with the network, which put his show on the Friday night death slot at 10 p.m., as opposed to the more family-friendly hour at 7 or 8 p.m., so Gene was essentially done with the show and only listed as an executive producer. The show had been renewed, but its budget was cut, and the quality of the episodes suffered. There were good episodes, such as the Enterprise Incident and All Our Yesterdays. Captain Kirk. Yes. Well, you look like the devil himself, but as long as you're alive. But for each good third season episode, there were four or five average to bad episodes, such as the much maligned Spock's Brain. His brain is gone where a weakened Spock literally has his brain removed from his head to run the power grid on a planet, and then his brain is put back in his head, and Spock literally sits up directly after the operation without a hair out of place. They could have at least bandaged his head, made it look like there was an operation. Anyway, that was some silly shenanigans which wouldn't have flown in the first two seasons going on right here and now. Between producing gigs, Freeberger wrote for more television series mostly Saturday morning Hanna-Barbera. Then he was brought aboard Space 1999 for its second and final season. It was his decision to let Barry Morris, who played Victor Bergman, go in favor of two new characters, Maya, an alien that has pointed ears and slanted eyebrows. Gee, I wonder where she got that idea from. Only her eyebrows seem to have warts. She was played by Catherine Schell. Then there was Tony Ferdeschi, he was played by Tony Anhalt. These casting decisions were not popular with most of the Space 1999 fans. Then after killing Space 1999 in 1976, he moved on to the Six Million Dollar Man in 1977 for what would be its, you guessed it, final season. After that, in 1980, he went on to the first season of Beyond Westworld, which would also be, yup, its final season. This gave him the nickname, the killer of science fiction. I still can't believe he was the robot. Yeah, the fool you. He really must have been perfect. Oh, he was. But his credits didn't stop there. In 1979, he went on to produce the Brian Dennehy vehicle, Big Seamus, Little Seamus. 
American Detective Show, which only made nine episodes, and only two of those were aired. That was our show for today. Yes, it's back to Axel for the closing. I put away my recording equipment, and, well, I paid for Revoicer, so I'm going to use it here. Anyway, let me know what you thought in the comments section. Did you know about Fred Freiberger? Are you surprised that he was given so many projects even after failing? Also, I'd be honored if you subscribed to my channel, rang the bell to stay informed and check out my Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter franchise. Also in the comments, until next time this is Axel, and for Kevin Given saying live long and prosper, may the force be with you and keep reaching for the stars.